and the three crew members getting ready to depart, all from Expedition 56, going from left to right. It's Drew Foistel, a NASA astronaut and the outgoing commander of Expedition 56. This was Drew's third flight into space, having previously flown on two shuttle missions, STS-125 and STS-134. In the middle there, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Artemyev, and he's going to be the Soyuz commander for the evening. This was his second flight. Uh, and in this full picture of Expedition 56, out of the third departing crew member, Ricky Arnold, there on the right, uh, a NASA astronaut. This was his second flight, a uh, veteran of one previous shuttle mission. Back inside the Poisk module, we can see again some of the hatches. So that's actually uh, Sergei Prokopiev, who's going to be remaining on board for Expedition 57 in view of the camera right here. Just next to him, uh, just a bit off to the right, is the hatchway inside of Poisk. Uh, and then just behind that is the actual hatch on the top portion of the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, the Soyuz spacecraft itself is split up into three different sections. Uh, we can actually see the hatchway into the lower, or actually the middle section, uh, just um, a little bit further back in our screen. That's the one we were getting some close-up views a little bit earlier. Uh, the crew members themselves will be located in that middle section. It's known as the descent module. That has, uh, most importantly, the heat shield. Uh, but also all of the life support and other items for the crew. This a uh, really good breakdown of the vehicle. Um, so we're actually getting some really good views right into the orbital module, um, which is the very top portion of the Soyuz spacecraft that actually has the docking probe, um, antennas and other things for actually navigating to the space station, as well as the hatchway that they move in and out of the spacecraft on. Uh, that module will actually get detached a little bit later on uh, before the uh, actual re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere following a deorbit burn, uh, and that will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. The descent module, though, has three seats, one for each of these crew members uh, with special seats inside with specially crafted seat liners designed to mold very specifically to each of the crew members' bodies so they're packed in as tightly as possible. Also has a small amount of cargo it can bring home. Um, typically uh, on the order of just a, a couple of kilograms. Uh, these crew members typically returning with uh, some science samples, uh, primarily samples from the human research program studies that they do. Uh, all of these crew members acting as test subjects themselves during their time on board. So they'll be bringing some of those samples home with them in that descent module. Uh, that module also having the parachutes. Uh, life support and other items uh, for the actual re-entry. At the very bottom, the instrumentation and service module. Um, that one does not have a habitation quarter for the crew. That's all vehicle systems, things like the solar arrays, the large orbital engines for actually doing the deorbit burn and other orbital maneuvers, um, and then other avionics, uh, things for navigation and control, and then some of the uh, ancillary life support systems as well. That one will also detach from the descent module, just like the orbital orbital module following that deorbit burn and it will also burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. So we're done taking photographs? Yes. Photographs are done. You can start transfer hatch closure. Sergei, uh, please keep in touch with us all the time. Okay, copy. And you go to the vehicle and close the hatches. And please continue running commentary as you close the hatches. Okay, that's all. Okay, go on. And so just now the crew getting the go to begin the hatch closing. So all now saying farewell. Uh, these uh, crew members have been together for the last couple of months, uh, ever since Prokopiev Kurs and Anand Chancellor arrived in June. But after they're done saying goodbye, Foisel, Artemyev, and Arnold making their way into the Soyuz spacecraft, and they'll be closing up the hatches. Okay, all the best, guys. 
Now we can see the crew members down in the Soyuz spacecraft. Again, there's two hatches, so there's one on the Soyuz itself, and there's one on the station side, which we can see Russian cosmonaut uh, Sergei Prokopiev has a hand on. He's the gentleman in the headset floating there inside the Poisk module. Okay. Remember the very best. Okay, all the best. Bye. Hatch is closed. I'll please provide the commentary. Yes, I'm closing the hatch. Hatch is closed. And the hatch closed on the Soyuz. Now Prokopia will work to close the hatch on the station side. The Soyuz hatch getting closed at 12.04 a.m. Central Time, 1.04 a.m. over on the East Coast. Closing the uh, pressure equalization valve, KVD. KVD is closed. Ignat, how do you copy? I copy you close the BOSU hatch and close it now on the station side. Okay, I'm closing MRM 2 SU hatch. Rick, are you going to go here? Let's see. So we're checking. Checking S4 is not eliminated. S4 is not on. S6 is not on. We have taken manual pressure gauge. Okay, Oleg. Go to page All right, and then you can see the, uh, the hatch on the station side now closed. Uh, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev doing the honors. Uh, that hatch closed coming at 12.06 a.m. Central, 1.06 a.m. Eastern. So with that, both hatches are now closed, and we are one step closer to undocking and eventual landing.